Hello and welcome to the Tenable Security Center product education channel. In this video, we're going to review the Tenable web application scanning vulnerabilities within Tenable Security Center. Now, let's assume that you've already run a few web application scans, so head over to the scans section of Security Center. While I only have a few web application scans and a few vulnerability management scans that have been imported, so it's easy to look through them, you may have hundreds of total scans, so you may want to filter down. It's important to remember you can filter down by type, such as web application. Let's go ahead and review the results of one of these scans. As you can see, there are quite a few vulnerabilities in this scan. I tend to put these vulnerabilities into roughly four buckets. The first class of vulnerabilities falls into kind of foundational hygiene, uh, such as HTTP headers and SSL TLS. And then the second bucket tends to fall into that component-based vulnerability. Now, the component-based vulnerabilities are very similar to those that may have a security center or a Nessus background. And this is because we are looking for a type of software in use along with an associated version of this software and vulnerabilities associated with them. The methods used to find these versions include reading response headers, traversing the site for known paths and URLs indicative of certain technologies and versions, and even interacting with the console within DevTools. In this particular case, we see not only vulnerabilities associated with the versions of Apache, but we also see a vulnerability that's critical in that the version of Apache is actually unsupported. We recommend starting with these first two categories, and again that was SSL TLS along with the security headers, and component vulnerabilities as those are generally the easiest to remediate. The next grouping of vulnerabilities is the web application specific vulnerabilities, the ones that harken back a little bit more closely to the OWASP top 10. As an example, let's click into this blind SQL injection vulnerability. We see we have just the one here. Just like with the other vulnerabilities within Security Center, we're going to give you a synopsis with a description and then steps to remediate. And over on the right hand side, you're going to see all exploit information, cross reference details. Now, where it starts to deviate and differ is that in the identification of the vulnerability, it's going to be much more closer towards the actual exploitation of the vulnerability. It generally will not be an actual exploitation attempt, but it will be as close as possible in order to validate that the vulnerability does exist. Now, to get to the information that you need to send over to your developers or validate the vulnerability is not a false positive, over on the right-hand side, we see that we have the attachments. These can be downloaded and sent off to your developers or your red team penetration testers for validation. Lastly, I want to point out some of the really useful informational level plugins. Important to call out here are the web application sitemap, which tells you what pages the scanner found and which of those were audited successfully during the scan, performance telemetry, which tells you what the scanner was doing at each point of the scan, and technologies detected, which gives you a rough software bill of materials from the scanner's perspective. There's also tons of other great plugins as well, such as detection of APIs, authentication-related plugins, and the like. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.